G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. So today we're up in a little spot um, after work here, not far from Newcastle, one of my favourite little spots. But due to lockdown restrictions and all that, I haven't been up here in whew, six months maybe. But um, I thought I would come up here today, hopefully you can hear it, it's bloody windy up here. But uh, I thought I'd come up here today to do something I've wanted to do for a while, I've been talking about it. Gonna do a full walkthrough, front to back, on the Ranger. Let's get into it. See, this is just... <laughs> So like I said, yeah, we're doing a full walkthrough front to back. I might even like see if I can hold this video camera and talk my way through it in one go. Might be hard, but here we go. So we'll start from the front, all the way to the back. Rightio, yeah, so at the front here, I am running uh, the TJM Chaser Bar. This thing, I love it. I personally think it is one of the best looking bars for the sort of PX ranges. Just looks sick. But as you saw, I did put a, do an install video on that um, a while ago at TJM Hunter Valley. So they uh, did it for me. So I've got the chaser bar in there as well. I've got the TJM 9,500 pound uh, torque winch, which is a beast. Used that a couple of times. Nice bit of gear. It's got an isolator in the engine bay as well. But I'm kind of winging it here. It's been a while since I've done a walkthrough. And then at the front here, we've got the Steady STTS. ST3303, it's a 28.2 inch light bar. Yes, I've got covers on all of my lights. Um, just running around town, I just le like to leave them on and then if I am no, I'm gonna be um, in the bush or out, out anywhere on some long roads, I'll take all the covers off. I know it's a bit of a wank factor, but I reckon it looks sick. And um, yeah, I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> then up. Uh, here I've got the GME 2.1 dB um, 600 mil whip. This thing see it, a little stumpy, looks cool. I love it. Might go around the side here. <clears throat> um, I've got the steady on the, I've got the little bonnet lights, driver side, passenger side. They are the steady C4 cube lights. These are the diffused ones, I think. I've got a couple. These might be the d diffused ones. They just shoot a bit of light out to the side when I'm, uh, if we're doing night tracks or whatever. I've got the TJM AirTech Snorkel. I'm not um, a massive fan personally of the uh, stainless snorkels. For me, they're too loud. Um, this one is fine. I've never had any dramas with it. All right. And then to the wheels and tires. The wheels are a 16 by eight rim from Dynamic uh, Wheelco. Just the standard steelies with the round pad, round holes in them. I don't need alleys unless Method wants, wants to sling me a set. <laughs> and then wrapped in the BF Goodrich KM3 at the moment, 315, 75, 16. And then in the front here with the suspension, we've got Upper control arms, I'm running the Super Pro upper control arms. If you've watched any of the videos earlier, I did do an install, a little install video on those Super Pro upper control arms. They've been pretty good. I did swap them out, back out to the Blackhawks again, um, if you saw that video, but I'll change them out. I think these ones are better. Um, I may change them out eventually to maybe the Tough Dog ones, um, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Leave them for now. It's fixed all my um, tire wear issues and everything so it's all good and then I'm running the suspension in the front I'm running Fox 2.0 suspension um, I got those from TJM but then I did take it down to Solve Off Road in Glen Denning and the guys down there put in some 800 pound coils the orange coils and revalved it to suit the front of the car which drives men on-road and off-road 
Yeah, oh, orange coils look sick. I've got that. I've got it set to around two and a half, two and three quarters. I do have a 10 mil strut spacer on top as well, just to give it that extra down travel and keeping um, that way you can use the the shock at its full potential, having that full range of movement in the spring, so you don't have to preload it to get that uh, extra height. Uh, but I've set mine so it sort of sits around that two and a half inch plus the tires so overall it might be three and a half four inches something like that <clears throat> I am also running a road safe diff drop in this it's just a bolt-in one um, any problems with that I, I did have a couple of bolts loosen up I did have to cut down a couple of extra bolts in that to make it work properly but it's all good now I've got no movement in my front diff which is perfect but with the suspension on these you don't once you go over three inches that's probably when you need to start looking at doing a diff drop but at the moment yeah if i was to do it again i probably wouldn't even do a diff drop yeah because that sort of snapping cvs thing is i think all in the driver so once you start bouncing that's when you got issues right yeah let's keep moving down here i do have the legend x rock sliders these things have taken an absolute beating. They are so solid. I did have to adjust them. I had to cut the back uh, chassis mount off. Um, and with the coil conversion, I did have to move that forward um, to where it needs to be. Lucky I did, because I did almost roll it up in cost with Barney and the boys up there. Um, and that was literally the only thing stopping me with that little um, step on the back end there. If I didn't have these, I would have gone on the lid which would not have been fun. Also in front end here, I do have the Bendix Ultimate 4x4 brake upgrade kit in there with, um, yeah, with the slotted rotors and extended brake lines in the front and back. They're all braided as well. Takes that bit of sponginess out of your brakes. Good little mod. Rightio. Let's go around this side. Up the top on the roof rack. So I am running a front runner roof rack. If you've seen Tyler Thompson's um, videos about roof racks, um, you'll know I reckon these are the best one on the market at the moment, in my opinion. I did used to run a rhino rack on the back, but unfortunately it was held together with roofing screws because I couldn't keep it um, nice and tight and it kept rattling apart. But you can carry more on the front runner roof rack. Uh, if you want to know more about roof load ratings and dynamic loads and static loads and that, go check out Tyler's Thompson. It's simple but in depth at the same time. You might learn something that is very important, have, knowing your weights for your roof as well for your, your car. I do have a, just the old shit shovel here for in the bush, digging myself out of pickles in the sand on the beach and doing your business. And then up top, I've got all these bad boys. I've got five steady quad pros. Those things are mint. They, um, I've just got them all different angled, the three in the front. I sort of, the middle one is straight ahead and then from there they sort of flare out um, on slight angles. But I'll get a heap of, those things have got epic distance and epic spread. Same with the one on the front. I did have the steady Type X pros on uh, the old bull bar. Oh, my arm. But I do like the light that the light bar throws out and with the distance, I reckon you get just enough distance. Um, I mean, it's huge distance, but it's got good distance and it's got a good amount of spread and the light isn't as harsh as just the, the spotties. Um, but those spotties are sick as well. All right, let's pop the hood and see what's under there. All right. Under the bonnet, I've got a whole heap of spaghetti here, so don't look too hard. <laughs> um, there is the isolator for the TJM torque winch up front there, under my little panel here, nice. I know I've got all the clips off, so it's nice and easy to remove off that little radiator shroud there. I am running the Ryko catch can and pre-filter over there. You've seen, I can link um, videos to that to the install. Around here, I'm running a Ryko air filter 
Um, the performance air filter from Ryko, that thing's a beast. I've also done a video on that. Any um, of the videos that I have done on stuff like this, I can link it in the description below. Um, yeah, for you to go have a look at, at and um, if you want to know inf more information about it, you can go check those videos out as well. So with my engine, I do have a tune. Um, a few years ago, or was it like three years ago maybe? Oh, it might be even nearly four years ago. I did go up to Legend X and Barney did put a tune through it. I think we got around 25 to 27% extra all up um, on gains. Um, it's a pretty safe tune. I was towing a trailer every day for work, so that's mainly what I wanted it for. I did get better fuel economy. I dropped about a litre and a half as well, um, so which is always a good thing. Radio. Oh, why my bonnet is up? I get asked a fair bit, of, a fair bit about these these steady lights and how they're mounted. So under here, there is a bracket that mounts just under your hinge here. Same on that side. But they are from Bullseye 4x4 products. Um, I can't remember how much they cost. I think they're about 80 bucks or something like that. But they work real well. So that's them, they're nice and easy to put on. We'll come around here to the other side of the front runner rack. I do have a table kit in here. So it comes, it's an extra option, an optional extra that you can get with um, these racks. So being a table, it's one of the, the hardest things to take away camping because they're always big and bulky. So it's just it's nice and slim. Sits up under there, just in the, uh, rack there nice and out of the way it does get a bit of wind noise but um i've got so much stuff on my car that it doesn't really bother me and i just turn up the uh stereo and then on top just got the trusty old treads mounted up there with some um quick release mounts up there so we'll run down the back here oh. as you all know i do have the superior ball conversion so I finally worked it all out. It's working a bloody treat. Lovells did help me out uh, with the coils. They're 450 constant coils. They're out of an ex-military vehicle that's now discontinued from what I know. But they're a four inch coil, but at the moment it's sitting at about, let's say three inches. So it rides sweet. I've got the Fox 2.0 remote res shocks from I got those from Solve. Nick down there did revalve them for me, but it was kind of a guessing valve. Next time I'm down in Glendenning, I'll pop in and see if we can um, get it all revalved. I'll probably get them all serviced again as well while I'm down there. Get them revalved, because those guys, man, they're uh, absolute legends and they know their shit about um, Fox Shocks. So if you're after Fox Shocks or more information, I can link them down below as well. But all the core conversion, I can link some of those videos down there. That thing was an absolute mission of a weekend to get put in. But it's all working sweet now and I'm finally used to it. I will do maybe a six or eight month review or rundown of it once, I, once I'm out and about and do some more full driving. And then with the tow bar, I get asked about this a fair bit as well. I am running a Heyman Reese tray back tow bar when I did the the tray and canopy. I did pick this bar up off eBay for 250 bucks off an online wrecker. Um, yeah, sent to the door for 250 bucks. Just brings it up nicely. I've got a lot of space in here, so I'm probably gonna do a rear winch eventually. That's my plan anyway. Look nice, just tucked away in there, nice and neat. Ultra hook hanging out the back. Rightio, so while I'm down the back around here, Oh, you all know I've got a Mitz alloy train canopy. I do work there now, so I don't know how biased I'm going to be towards this. But I absolutely love it. Um, and to be honest with you, I haven't really changed anything since putting it on. Um, the only thing I did add is the Travel Buddy shelf. Um, but it was only a couple of weeks after getting it, um, I think. But over here, I've got the Ender Drive. 200 amp hour lithium BTEC battery, uh, 2000 watt inverter. Um, I've just kept it open still. 
Um, and in the back here, I've just got um, my, I've just got some extra eyelets just put into the uni strut. Um, so that's the beauty of the mid alloy train canopy setups. It's got the uni strut in there, so you can bolt stuff in and up, um, out, nice and easily. Um, up here, oh, I don't know if it'll, I do have, I don't know if it's gonna work. There we go. I do have the camp lights. They're fully adjustable and dimmable. Um, they're sweet. I didn't go any central locking on my canopy. Uh, for me personally, I thought one day it'll stuff up and I'll get locked out of my car and I won't be able to get into my canopy, uh, which it eventually did happen. Maybe two months ago, something like that, three months ago. Had to sit in the car park at Total Tools and wait for Beck to come with come to me with um, the spare key. But luckily I could get into the canopy still. And I had beers in there, I just chilled out, watched some YouTube videos and drank a couple of beers in a car park. Um, underneath, I've just got the under tray toolboxes there on both sides. This one I just keep some uh, bit oils and bits and pieces. And then while I'm down the back here, still walking around, I do have the Legend X three inch exhaust. Yes, this one does have a muffler. Oh, I don't know why I'm yelling the mic's just there. <laughs> Sorry. So it isn't heaps loud, but it sounds really good under load. Um, I didn't go straight through. I just thought, you know, it's one less thing that I can get in trouble for. <laughs> Then around the back here, we've got the Ignite tail lights. All right. And in here, we've got the 1500 um, rear pull out drawer. I've got the lid. This thing's mad. It's removable. And I've sort of cut it out there because I do keep the stretcher in there. And I just keep all bits and pieces. We've got tools, a bit messy at the moment. Another charger, I got my tire puncher repair kit, you know, range of life. I've got two CVs in there, got a little blowtorch. Um, on the back here, I've got the fold down ladder, standard, which I can go up onto the roof rack up there where I do keep the solar panel as well. We'll choke, we'll shut this so I don't forget. Radio, so around this side in the Passenger side, I do keep my TJM compressor in there, in this one. And then just on the front here of the canopy, I do have a 30 litre headboard water tank. I've got my solar input output here up on the solar panel up top there. I don't really take this canopy off much at all, so I don't really plan to be doing much with the solar, it's just gonna stay there. Up top here, got this big boy. The right Co 270 awning. I mean, I apologize for doing probably one of the world's worst <laughs> reviews on anything, but it is actually awesome. It's got mad coverage and you got full 270 um, coverage. It does actually get pretty tight. I know in my video when I did it, I was on some real bad ground and I just couldn't get up there to um, reach up and tighten it. I just had bad shoulders at the time as well, but um, just from building. But I guess that's no excuse. I can probably like undo it again and show you, but it's real windy right now. Oh. And then on the passenger side, I do have the single drawer and table. This thing pulls out. Pretty buddy far, oh, a bit further. Do all my food prep, it's not actually this tall when I'm on flat ground, which is actually really good. So I just keep all my food stuff in here, some cooking stuff. I'll shut this. And then just on top of the drawer, I've got two of these crash pad storage bags. Just I go back to back with them 
I just keep more cooking stuff and then in the other one I keep um, just some bits and pieces, some salt and pepper or whatever. I, I don't even know what's in there, it's been that long um, since I've been camping. But I keep the induction cooker in there as well. And then the ES220 clear view drop side. Oh, my fridge is open. Uh, so, um, I did on Instagram, I did put up a thing saying I'm doing a walkthrough and if you got any questions, I did just have a cheeky look and there was a bunch of questions about when are you going to go an upright. Never. <laughs> my reason for that is I've got this sweet little clip on table that just goes on there and I do, I chuck my in, induction cooker on here and then I use the top of the fridge as another sort of workbench where I put stuff up there. And then I've got my little table here that I just go between. Um, when it's on flat ground, it's actually pretty nice and, and, and at, a, at a decent height. But for me personally, I do like the chest fridge over the upright. I know the upright's got the benefit like the ES220 weighs like 48 kilos, so you do save on that weight, but then I reckon you're doing yourself a disservice by not having uh, your chest fridge. And another thing is stacking of the fridge, I'm pretty, I just sort of throw all my stuff in there. I'm not too phased about it. I kind of stack it neat, neatly, but when you're bouncing around on 4B tracks, I just don't see the upright having its benefits. This is where the chest fridge for me personally, comes down, yeah, to just how I run my setup. I mean, it's just a sort of daily in and out, nice and easy, quick um, sort of setup. The Bushman's 85 litre that would fit in here would be sweet. But for me personally, this is the way I went. I already did have uh, the travel, the Evercool Travelmate fridge, and I'm not going to change it anytime soon. I'm used to it. That's how I've always run, so I'm just going to stick to that. One thing that I do get asked about all the time is this little pouch on the front here. It's just off um, crash pad. It's got Velcro on here and all these little Velcro sort of strips so you can mount it to cargo racks and things like that or anything carpeted. Um, I just I just put a few little holes and zip tied it onto the, the handle. I just find it's a nice little storage sort of pocket. I keep um, just some charging cords, um, some knives, air, um, Bushman's air guard, whatever you, mozzie repellent, or knives and forks and things. Just some random stuff in there, but it's nice and easy. And then to my 12 volt on this side, I've got the Ener Drive off-grid package. Uh, you got your Sci Marine um, touchscreen panel here showing all your little, there we go all your ins and outs. I've got 10 days left on that battery. Got your toggle switches. You can hook up some pump and light. I don't have anything um, hooked up at that at the moment. External lights, I don't run any external lights. I'm pretty simple. That's the um, camp light on this side. So you can, it's fully dimmable. And then you can change it to orange for those mozzies when you're in those summer nights. So now one thing that I always get asked about good old back seats that's right i ripped them out so i've just made up this box out of 12 mil ply i just cut got these cutouts to for the door handles here to go around there but these are just i just got one on each side over in the driver's side as well these are just nice easy just handy crate boxes from bunnings that i bought um i just keep um food and extra stuff a lot of a lot of the time in here if we need to store any more stuff when beck and i are going away for a longer trip we'll sort of organize these a bit better but 
The dog sits up here, never had any problems with it. It's just real simple, it just bolts into the seat, seat bolts where, I, where the seat would be. So, I don't know, that cost me like 80 bucks or something to make. And then in the front here, I, I do have a GME EPIRB. I probably, it's probably a bit overkill. Um, oh yeah, I'm on the man shakes every now and then too. <laughs> um, got the EPIRB. Um, but GME have just bought out a new little personal locating beacon, which is mint. And then internally here, I am running a GME. Whoop. XRS, this thing's a beast of a unit. Um, so I can link that in there. I do have the Red Arc Tow Pro as well. And then I've just got some external lights. I'm a bit lazy with how I've done some things in here. And then up the front here, I do have the Light Force um, switch fascia panel uh, that runs all my spotties and my locker. We'll go around to the driver's side quickly. And then on the driver's side here, I do have some extra gauges. I've got the EGT, just some good old SAS gauges, EGT and the boost gauge. And this is just a SAS pillar pod. Uh, it did come black, so I did have to paint it myself to match, which I think it worked out pretty well. And then I've got my RAM mount here just for my to hold my phone. And then mounted down here, whoop. I do have a scan gauge too, so on this i got my um, air intake, my coolant temp, the auto trans temp and my volts. Just I like to monitor everything on the ranges or any sort of modern common rail diesel these days. A scan gauge is probably one of the best sort of monitoring devices that you can have along with your EGT and your boost. Um, that's just what I run and I think um, it's a good combination. You can always see if temperatures and everything are spiking um, and give you a bit of time to maybe, you know, get on top of something if there is anything going wrong. So, but that's just what I run. Oh, so I... I think I did cover everything. I thought about it all the way here on the drive about how I was supposed to do it and hopefully not miss anything. But if I did miss anything and you want to know something, um, let me know and I'll get back to you in the comments. But what I did do, like I mentioned just before, I did uh, put a little uh, story up on Instagram. Yeah, I put this up. Filming a walkthrough. Any questions? It's actually a few questions. So before before it goes dark, we'll um put we'll go through um some of these questions. There might be 20 questions or something like that in the last hour. I do get there's a, a few questions on here: wheels and tires and suspension. I did run through that. BF Goodridge KM3s. I don't like them at all. Um, I'm running them into the ground and then I'm going to get some different tyres. <clears throat> uh, 315, 7.5, I mean, they've been alright, but the first track that I did do, chewed them out straight away and I've just never been impressed um, ever since. And then they are, uh, the wheel, the rims are steel rim by Dynamic Wheelco, 16 by 8 uh, with a POS20 offset. I didn't mention that earlier. So POS20 offset. <clears throat> Um, with the ranges and this sort of setup, POS 20 and Zero kind of work best with the least amount of inner guard work as well. Maybe I can get a someone else's Ranger and we can do a chop on it, or not a chop, like put some 35s on it and do the correct um, inner guard work. Maybe I'll make a little video like that. I'll think about that. And then the suspension, two and a half, to to two and three quarters inch Fox 2.0s. <clears throat> when are you finally getting methods um, from Brendan Derrick? Mate, I love methods, um, but I also really love the look of steel, um, steel rims. Um, always have, always will. But like I said, if Method want to come on board and sling me some some wheels, I'm definitely not going to say no. <laughs> they're expensive.
So, uh, another question about the inner guard work. What did you do? What work did you do to fit the 35s? I mean, it's pretty simple. You do put put the wheels and tires on with the offset that you want, and then it's a matter of just um, seeing where it hits on that back corner of the the guard at the bottom. And what you do is you pull out the inner guard, the honeycomb on the inside of the inner guard. There's a honeycomb block. You pull that out. Use that big bolt. Pull the inner guard back with that bolt and then you'll see a little bit of exposed guard just draw a nice neat line cut off with some snips or an angle grinder paint it up and then get a bit of positive cam um, positive caster into your wheel alignment just to pull them forward a touch worked a treat and i've never had an issue and at full tuck these do not scrub did you put the recovery points on yourself or what make and brand did you go with I didn't put them on myself. Uh, all the TJM pull bars, they do come with rated recovery points inbuilt into the bar. What awning? Uh, we got, yeah, the Rightco 270 awning. Mate, it's sick, it's it's black, everything's black on it. Uh, with my color scheme that I got going black, it fits perfectly, there's full coverage. It's a mint awning. I didn't give it enough credit in um, that review video I did, unfortunately. But it does get nice and tight. You just got to pull it harder. When are you getting an upright fridge? Never. Don't want to. Upright or chest, drop down chest? No. J Paps. Your honest thought on the coil setup now that you've had it in for a while. Um, I do, I, I am going to do a full video on this, but um, it has taken me a long time to get used to the way it drives. Like I said in the other videos, the front goes up, the back goes side to side, so it's really weird. Um, it's real boaty. But now that I'm used to it, yeah, I can't complain. Um, it did take me a bit with the coils, but it's pretty good now. EVC throttle controller, no, I don't have one of those. I do have a Legend X uh, throttle controller though. It's been in there at the same time we did the tune and exhaust and sliders. Um, I play around with the settings every now and then. Um, it's just got it sort of in a tow, towing mode and it's pretty good off-road as well with the throttle response. How many kilometers do you have on the Ranger from long, longest road 4x4? I've got 189,000 kilometers on the clock. Still going strong. I want to do a 200,000 kilometer review for Ford. That's going to come up, yeah in not not the too distant future power and fuel consumption um, the fuel consumption now with the tray on it because it sticks out wider and i do have the lights on the front and it is a lot heavier now my fuel sits around the sort of 15 to 16 liters per 100 um, i could probably get it down to 14 and a half um, driving conservatively on the highways but it's pretty good power I can't remember the numbers. If I can hit up Barney and see if he's got them on file still, I'll highlight them over this. But I can't remember. I got about 25 percent gains all around, and it's sweet. All be life. One thing you mess about, you miss about the old setup. Nothing. A tub, a tub and canopy setup is silly. I did do a video on this. Um, it was comparisons over tray and canopy to um, tub and canopy. There is no comparison. The access that you have, when it comes down to, to it, the accessibility in your canopy is the biggest factor here. Um, you can access, with a setup like mine, you can access every square inch of the tray, of the canopy, um, which with a tub and canopy setup, you're always going through the back and the windows are always small. It's no good. I did it for too many years. Would you change to the next Ranger with the V6? I'm pretty keen to see that Ranger come out. It does, from what I've seen, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, and Ford, if you ever watch this, I'd love to, I'd love to be part of that <laughs> reveal when it comes out. But I'm keen as to see it. Um, I'm definitely going to hit one of the local dealers up, see if I can take it out for a spin as soon as it comes in. When's the turbo upgrade? Or don't need need it now because you don't tow anymore. I only tow the boat. Um, I'm gonna sell the tool trailer. So, but 
you know, I might do some more engine upgrades, like, like um, intercooler, I haven't done an intercooler and turbo and injectors, um, you know, it's still going strong at the moment. I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's all good for now. There's, I, I don't drive hard. I sort of drive like a grandpa. If you pass me on the freeway, you'll fly straight past me. That's, I just drive slow everywhere. I just cruise, man. I've got no, you know, I don't have to get anywhere in a hurry. Um, so yeah, I just cruise. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. How's, um, this just came through. How's the canopy set up after having it for a while and anything you would change? Uh, to be honest with you, I would not change a thing. Um, I'm pretty simple with how I run my gear. I get you, I'm a sort of person that can get something and just get used to it and learn to um, utilize it as it is. Um, so I'm not a real technical person. I don't think about that sort of stuff, about changing stuff up all the time um, with setups like that. Um, the only thing that I would maybe add if I was doing a longer trip is just a smaller drawer that I could put some extra spares and spare bits and pieces in, fan belts and some oils and I don't know, nuts and bolts and things like that. But I'd probably just take that out if I'm just around town. But I would not change my setup right now. I'm absolutely frothing on how it's turned out. Of course, I have had a heap of help. You know, TJM, Hunter Valley, they did do all the bar work and winch for me. Um, Steady Lights supplied all those lights. GME supplied um, the XRS in there, as well as all the stuff for my boat. Um, Mets Alloy, they did sponsor that whole package. With that being said, if I was to do it again, I would, I think the tray and canopy would be my very first mod. Um, yeah, my first thing that I do, I don't think I would let the, the car come back to me out of the showroom without a tray and canopy set up. Yes, I do work at Mids Alloy, so I guess it's easy for me to say that. But even if I didn't work at Mids Alloy, um, I would. That would be my. I, I think there was another question. Um, the best mod, train canopy setup, hands down. Um, I get told it all the time at work. It's time to get rid of the tub because it's useless, and I <laughs> can only agree with them. So and that's from personal experience. But yeah, the train canopy setup for sure is my favorite mod. Oh, that and the whole front end, the Baja look on the, on the, like with the lights up top. I mean, the whole look is just, I don't know, I reckon it's sick. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, or two things actually, the flares that I'm running are EGR flares. And I do have a bunch of rock lights um, underneath and I've got all um, un I've got I'm running the TJM uh, underbody bash plates as well I don't think there's anything else if you if you need got a question about anything on this car that I've forgotten I don't think I've forgotten everything um, just shoot me a question Instagram Facebook um, on in in the comment section below I'll try put as many products in the description below as I can possibly think of that's on there now I might even just sit down with a list write them out and I'll do my best to link every product in there so you can check them out but other than that I don't I think that's it if I've missed anything please let me know I hope this has given you a bit more insight into all the mods and bits and pieces that I've got on the car. There's a bit going on. Hopefully the sound has turned out all right. I'm kind of yelling at, at the camera. Um, it's windy as shit right now. But, hope you liked it guys. Make sure you hit that uh, notification bell for more videos. Give it a thumbs up, share it around, um, leave a comment. Any questions, hit me up, let me know. 
think that's it. Enjoy. Is there any other mods you would do to this thing? Let me know. I'm sure there's some more on the list. Anyway, yeah, let me know guys. Next mod, what do you reckon? It's never done, is it? Actually, there's one thing I did forget. The crash pad, bin bag. And in here, I keep a 30 litre bin from Bunnings. That's a good mod. 